7-11. If therefore, Kabando Levataya, perfection whereby the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need if there was perfection in that operation of the law? Of what need? What further need was there? That another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek and not be called after the order of Aaron. Are you following? 12. I love this. For the priesthood being changed, the priesthood has changed. There is made of necessity a change also of the law. The priesthood has changed. Except you are under Aaron, then follow the laws of Moses. But if you are under Jesus, the priesthood has changed. So the law of Moses is expired, rusticated, obliterated, and metola de bagaya. The law of Moses has been taken out of the way, retired without retirement benefits. Because the priesthood has changed. Are you following now? Because the law of Moses and the Levitical priesthood could not bring perfection. So it failed in its assignment. Now put that scripture for me again. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Earlier on, I told you about Romans 3. One, the verse, verse 31. Do we then nullify the law by this feat? Not at all. Rather, we uphold the law. That's Romans 3.31. I just want you to know it is there. You don't think I'm quoting things that don't exist. I want to read you Romans 7. Do you not know, brothers and sisters, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law has authority over someone as long as that person lives? I don't understand. Is he writing to the Hebrews? Have you heard people try to bash the book of Hebrews and say it was written to Jews? Oh, there's nothing they have not done. They bash James. They bash Peter that he was writing to the 12 tribes. He was at writing to Jews. This Roman Zunko. So the law of Moses is expired, rusticated, obliterated, and metola uh, de bagaya. The law of Moses has been taken out of the way, retired without retirement benefits. Because the priesthood has changed. For I am speaking to those who know the law. Why should they know the law? Because before grace and truth is the law. You want to teach people grace and truth? What I'm doing to you right now is what was supposed to be done with scriptures. You show them the law and then you show them grace and truth. We, we, we messed it all up. Because of many sincere people who read the book of Romans, ignore the verses they don't understand. I just gave you Romans 3.31. It says we do not nullify the law. We uphold it. And here we are going around using the book of Romans especially in Galatians, to nullify the law. Paul, everything he was teaching was from the law. How could he teach it if he didn't know the law? Romans 7, 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sinful? Certainly not. I'm reading your Bible. I would not have known what sin was had it not been for the law. The law te tells you what is wrong. But it also tells you what to do about it. The instructions are extracted from here. So the law of Moses is expired, rusticated, obliterated, and metola de bagaya. The law of Moses has been taken out of the way, retired without retirement benefits. Because the priesthood has changed. Verse 12. So then the law is holy, and the commandment is holy, righteous, and good. This is Paul, the apostle of grace. Did that which is good then become death to me? What is he referring to? The law. Did it become death to me? By no means. Nevertheless, in order that sin might be recognized as sin, it used what is good to bring about my death, so that through the commandment, sin might become utterly sinful. The law shows you clearly how bad sin is. That's the job of the law. Sin, sin is bad. You're supposed to know them all. 
Why? Because all those laws are still in force. Jesus said in Matthew 5, heaven and earth will pass away. Not one jot or tittle of the law will fail. And it's very easy. Has heaven and earth passed away? No. Will the heavens and earth pass away? Yes. The Bible tells you that the heavens and earth will pass away and there will be a new heaven and a new earth. In other words, as long as this present heavens and earth are in force, the law is in force. The absence of law is called anomia. Your King James calls it iniquity. Other translations, NSV and others, call it lawlessness. It's better to understand it that way. Iniquity sounds very iniquitous. <laughs> and you be kittos <laughs> everywhere. Iniquity just sounds bad. If I tell you you've committed an iniquity, you say, no, no, it's not bad like that. But if I say, ah, oh, that's very lawless behavior, you won't think it so much. What's 